thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, indeed, Carpathian Foundation is quite a unique organization because uh, it consisted of, uh, well, we used to be one organization, one international organization consisting of five parts, five in one. Uh, we used the slogan, uh, uh, five nations, one community. So Romania, Ukraine, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary. Uh, foundation of this organization was related to establishment of Carpathian Euro region. Uh, when it was established, it became very clear that it's not enough. I mean, this formal agreement between the governments. Uh, there is needed something which will, uh, which would fulfill this cooperation, which will make possible to cooperate, uh, uh, to make cooperation between uh, municipalities, between uh, regular people, organizations, and, and so on. Uh, the structure of our organization changed many times, and it actually reflected the changes in the region. In 2007, we split into five uh, independent organizations, but we still work as one network. Uh, in the past, before the war, our main efforts were in the field of grant making. So we were mainly grant making organization, uh, supporting different projects in different fields. Uh, in Ukrainian case, it was mainly about social services community development, we targeted small, small organizations, uh, grassroots organizations in really remote small communities, villages, towns, and so on. But also before the war, we started to develop a new structure, uh, Carpathian Civil Society Forum, or HAP, as we call it. The idea is to bring together not just bigger organizations like Carpathian Foundation in Ukraine or in uh, Slovakia, but smaller organizations from the local communities to, to, to create opportunities for them to cooperate, to fundraise, uh, to find new partners, to find new donors. And the most interesting that when the war started, you know, it showed its effectiveness. Members of our hub, they helped each other a lot. They provided humanitarian aid, they helped uh, for the refugees and so on, so on, so on. Uh, in our case, with the beginning of the war, as it was told already today, uh, well, all Ukrainian organizations are not working in the normal way right now. Uh, we are engaged in, in the activities which are not typical for us. Since the beginning, we were mainly concentrated on the humanitarian aid. So looking at uh, what is needed from our partners abroad, all over, all over Europe, bringing it here, distributing it to different regions of Ukraine. But very soon we understood that it's very important humanitarian aid, but we should do what we can do professionally. So we should turn back to grant making. I, I can explain why. Now it's very evident already that unfortunately this crisis related to the war, refugees crisis, it's not a short-term uh, short term event. Unfortunately, we will have the consequences of this crisis for many months, maybe years. And as grant maker, we started preparing for this. We launched already the first call uh, for proposals uh, to support organizations which can already establish and sustain long-term services for the refugees. In, uh, in the autumn, unfortunately, we expect uh, quite, I would say, negative trends. Most of the refugees live in, uh, in the educational institutions. If we start a new academic year in September, we will have problems with this. Now we have summer when everything is relatively cheap, you know, utilities, food, and so on. What would happen in the autumn when the prices will go up? And there are many, many, I, I don't want to list all the challenges. What I'm going to say is that we already, as foundation, we, we, we are preparing for this. 
providing grants for the organizations which can uh, eliminate or at least uh, prepare themselves uh, to meet these new challenges. So that's briefly what, what we are doing and how our work changed because of the war. 